34. Panther G. Okay. It ticks all the boxes regards armor Sherman. protection, mobility, and fire power. Never have no combat reliability, so I agree. And must still exist today at Toxic Shimmer. Set to I one pass later or one tighter. Because hands are hard to be in, but they could have been in like a flash of fire. If they had made their legal best of the tiger and all that, they would have been in. Here it is. The terrible question that has plagued World War II message boards for years and probably for years to come. Unfortunately, due to a slight setback in the video I was going to release today, we're going to answer this question. What was the best tank of the war? And I want to die. Now, there are a few layers to this question, but the first few that people always usually flock to are statistics on paper. Gun penetration, armor thickness, things like that. And because of that, a lot of people put the Panther on the pedestal for the best tank of the war. And don't get me wrong, it is a very impressive tank. Its long 75mm gun was extremely deadly at very long ranges and it had really good armor that was pretty tough to get around. In fact, all third generation German tanks pretty much had these awesome features, a good gun and good armor. Once you start looking at them from a second point of view, say a production standpoint, they start to not look so good. Because the Germans couldn't produce that many of their tanks because they were so complicated and because of German production methods. If looking from the production point of view, you could look at tanks like T-34 or the Sherman. The T-34 was created in eye-watering amounts and was perfect for a large war of attrition like World War II. On top of this, it did have a pretty decent gun and pretty decent armor for most of its life, including the 76 and 85 millimeter versions. But then perhaps you're looking at your best tank from the point of view of crew survivability, which is something that the T-34, at least in my opinion, didn't really have. I mean, look at that bow gunner's position. You don't even have a hatch, you just have that tiny thing on the floor. That's like the worst scenario for if the tank is on fire. And with that in mind, you gotta look at tanks like the M4 Sherman, which had individual spring-loaded hatches for four of the five crewmen in the tank, and was one of the most survivable tanks of the war. In fact, the Sherman ticks a lot of these boxes here that we've been talking about previously. It was easy to mass produce, it was a fairly capable vehicle, and was able to be used on all fronts, from the steppes of Russia to the jungles of Southeast Asia. In fact, it's been really nice to see the Sherman's reputation revamped by historians in recent years after the tarnishing it took from the book that shall not be named. But even this tank did have its shortcomings. Its small, wheeled, bogey suspension would not allow it to have the same cross-country, obstacle-clearing potential as, say, T-34 or Panther with their large road-wheel design, and its performance was somewhat lackluster at times at the end of the war against bigger German tanks. So even it, I would say, isn't the best tank of the war because it also falls prey to some of these problems. But then what about Japanese tanks? And I know what you gotta be thinking if I'm mentioning Japanese tanks in a World War II best tank competition. You gotta be thinking, Johnny is a fucking retard! But Japanese tanks in the 30s against the Chinese force with little to no tanks did a very good job of supporting the infantry and the mechanized infantry, the exact thing they were supposed to be doing. It's only later on when they run into American tanks that they, well, do this. Quite often, actually because they were outdated at that point and the Sherman was just so much better. But also, talking about Japanese tanks in this way kind of misses the point entirely. Japan was going to beat the United States with its navy, because they were a naval power, and because they were fighting in the South Pacific. Creating larger tanks to fight on small islands in the South Pacific in battles that probably would have been sorted out by the infantry anyways, wasn't going to help the large Japanese strategic plan of defeating the U.S. Navy, which is what they needed to do for the war they found themselves in. So I guess what I'm building to here, looking at design, tactics, and grand strategy, is there was no best tank of the war. And every country was building tanks to fill its needs. Was the Panther maybe the best tank for the German army? Yeah, I think so. It really kept up with the tank arms race they had going with the Soviet Union. But would it be the best tank for the United States? No. It broke down a lot. It's way too heavy and couldn't be shipped to all the theaters, and it couldn't be made in the numbers that the U.S. Army needed. But would the M4 have been the best tank for, say, the Japanese? I don't think so. They needed small infantry support tanks that could be taken to very specific islands very quickly. And sometimes even, at places like Iwo Jima and Tarawa, the Japanese tanks would sort of outperform the American tanks in maneuverability because the American tanks would get bogged down in the sand due to their weight and the light Japanese tanks could move freely. So you could make the argument that although the Hago was not a very good tank all around, it was probably the best tank for the Japanese forces at the time. And you can say the same about the T-34. I've already made a video on this, but the T-34 was made cheaply and very quickly. So yeah, it broke down. And yeah, a lot of them got destroyed. But it was made with the idea of an attritional war in mind. So that's exactly what suited the Soviets. Even Italian tanks, for as much grief as they get, were designed by the Italians with their needs in mind. 
They thought they were going to be fighting in the mountains. I mean, the first place they attack is Greece. So they make small infantry support tanks that can maneuver in the mountains and not break down there. Now, when these tanks are used in the desert in North Africa, of course they do poorly, because that's not what they were designed for. And this leads in part to their bad reputation. I think the most solid case for best tank of the war would probably be M4 Sherman, just due to the fact that it was used everywhere. From the steppes of Russia to the jungles of Southeast Asia, it did its job and it did it well. But I still think this question can't be singularly answered with one tank. It's way too big of a question and there's too many variables and I don't think it has an answer. But I know what you're thinking. You clicked on this video for a clickbaity title and you really wanted my impression of what the greatest tank of the war is. So if I had to pick one, it would be the Bob Simple tank. This ingenious design would have caused destruction on the battlefield in ways that we can't even fathom if only the New Zealanders had had the balls to put it into service.